All right, good morning. All right, last week I had uh, some major technical problems and I think I have those issues resolved now. I had a tech person come out to the house and take care of some things. So hopefully there's not gonna be issues on my end um, like there were last week. All right, I just wanna make sure I know where I'm at here. Um, I did finish I did finish lesson two, two, right? I did the geese problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Um, so let me give you the rundown here. I gave an extra day. If you noticed in classroom, I had um, lesson two, two due tonight, but I'm making it due tomorrow night. Uh, today, I just want to take a lot of questions. Um, and then we're, I want to, it's not for sure yet, but I'm, I'm planning on an exam on Friday morning at eight o'clock on lesson 2122. So in 2-1, um, you were introduced to a new form and um, which has a different order. And so, and also in that lesson, there were a lot of fractions. And so I spent a lot of time last period, like just going over, like, how do you deal with these fractions? Um, so I'd, I'd be happy to do that um, in this period also. And um, in 2-2, People are still having problems with the graphing calculator. I mean, what I recommend is you watch the YouTube video on Roxanne Birch's YouTube channel um, where I'm explaining um, through several problems how to use the graphing calculator to do the graphical approach for solving. And then you also in two, two need to know how to solve algebraically. And um, so there's a lot of fractions everywhere. And um, I know that teachers up to this point kind of avoided fractions. From this point on, um, we're not going to be able to avoid fractions. So in Algebra 2, pre-calculus, calculus, there's going to be fractions all over the place. So um, I know that you, you have difficulty with fractions, so I already know that. You know, So I, I don't need to find out. I already know that you have problems. So let's just you know, see the writing on the wall and let's just attack those third grade, seventh grade issues and learn how to work with fractions. So, cause we're gonna have to deal with them. We're not gonna be able to escape them now. All right, so uh, the plan today is I'm planning on just clearing up uh, anything that you have questions with, especially with fractions. Um, I do want to show you how to eliminate fractions when you're solving an equation, um, because obviously the more we work with fractions and decimals, the more chance we have of making mistakes because we're just not, let's face it, we're not good at so um, my, my whole thing is let's get rid of fractions when we have the opportunity so that we're not um, prone to, you know, make errors. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to answer questions and then we're going to work in the math wizard teams. Because of all the problems I've been having lately with the tech issues, um, I haven't changed the groups, but I am going to be changing the groups as soon as I have the opportunity. All right, so. I, I want to work a problem on page 82, problem number 14. So page 82, number 14. Have I worked this with you guys yet? No. Okay. Well, this is a really nasty problem. Not only do we have fractions, we have a mixed number. So before I do this, I want to give you a crash course on uh, improper fractions and mixed numbers. So for example, if you had three and a half, to change it to an improper fraction, you multiply and add the remainder. So that would be six plus one is seven halves. So that's what in algebra two, we would rather work with improper fractions. When we work with mixed numbers is when we're doing real life problems. Because this mixed number will make sense to a human being. So let's do another one. So let's say you have seven and three fourths. You would multiply the seven times four and add three. So that'd be 28 plus three is 31 fourths. So this would be the mixed number. That would be the improper fraction. So 
So if you wanted to change five and two thirds, the mixed number to an improper fraction, you would say that's 15 plus two is 17 over three. So notice the remainder. I mean, notice the denominator stays the same and the remainder is on the top. Let's say we had an improper fraction now. Let's say we had an improper fraction like 19 fifths. To change that to a mixed number, we say five times what is 19 without going over, which would be um, a three. So that's 15 and the remainder would be four. Let's say you have 11 thirds. Three times what is 11 without going over, and the remainder would be two. So that's how you change an improper fraction to a mixed number. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to add two to both sides. And we get seven times the absolute value of one half. And I'm gonna change that to six plus one is seven over two equals seven. So we're gonna isolate the absolute value by dividing both sides by seven, so the absolute value of one half X plus seven halves equals one. Okay, now we're gonna write the disjunction. So this would be one half X plus seven halves equals one, or the negative case, I remember we were talking about this, I can write the negative case like this by skipping the first step. And now you're gonna see me eliminate the fractions. So you cannot do this with an expression, but with an equation, I can multiply both sides by two and eliminate the fractions in one step. Now, remember you have to distribute two so this is like two times a half. Well, isn't two times a half one when you cross cancel? So wouldn't this be one X? And then these twos would cancel. And so you would have one times seven is seven equals two. So what we did is we took all these fractions and wrote an equivalent statement of X plus seven equals two, which is way easier to work with. Now, did you follow that or do you want me to do it again? Okay. Are there other people that did not understand what I did? All right, well, subtracting five, seven from both sides, you get X is equal to negative five. Over here, same thing. I'm gonna eliminate the fractions in the first step by multiplying both sides by two. Don't forget to distribute. So the twos cancel because you're multiplying. So one times X is X. Cancel the twos. One times seven is seven equals negative two. So when you subtract seven, you get X is equal to negative nine. So in this case, you have two solutions. You have negative nine and negative five. Okay. 
you know, we're going to be doing a lot of this stuff. So it's important that you understand. Let me just show you another example. Let's say you had one half X plus three fourths equals one twelfth. The way I'm going to teach this is I'm going to have you break things down to prime numbers. So this is a two, this is a two times two, and that's a three times two times two. And to get the number that we multiply both sides by, we're going to look at this and go, what is this two missing that he has? Well, he's missing at least, he's missing one, two, and he's missing a three. This guy is missing a three. And so the common denominator, you can see it, is two times two times three, two times two times three, two times two times three. So the common denominator is 12. So we're gonna multiply both sides by 12 over one. And we're gonna eliminate the fractions on one step. So over here, I can just straight out cancel and get one. But over here, I have to be careful because I have to distribute the 12. So two times what is 12 when you cross cancel? Two times what is 12? Six. So six times one X is six X, wrong color. Four times what is 12? Three. Three times three is nine. And so we just took a complicated uh, equation with fractions and changed it to this. These are equivalent. And so you would solve for X. Okay, anybody want to see this again? Last call. I know you don't get it. So about 80% of my students do not get this solved, but I'm leaving it up to you to ask me if you want to ask me fine. If you don't, fine. All right, we're multiplying both sides by 12. And as long as we do that, we are keeping the equality. So it's like we're multiplying fractions, 12 over one times one half. When you multiply fractions, you can cross cancel. The reason why I'm not showing it is because you have to distribute the 12 to the second part. So I showed it over here. So when you cancel a 12, you get a one times one, which is one. But over here, when you cancel two and 12, you get a six and six times one X is six X. A positive times a positive is a positive four. When you cancel the four and the 12, you get a three and a three times three is a nine. So you would go ahead and subtract nine from both sides. Six X equals negative eight. Divide both sides by six. X is equal to, and you would have to simplify this. Divide by two, divide by two would be negative four thirds. Okay, any questions about anything that's on the board right now? If you have a question, ask me. So for when you're multiplying fractions, you're going to multiply based off of uh, which number, well, the denominator, um, you're going to multiply the denominator on the, you're going to, right, you're going to find the least common denominator. And, and instead of getting a common denominator, we're going to multiply by the least common denominator to eliminate the fractions on the first step. Yeah. Thank you. Now, I didn't learn it this way. Uh, my teachers made me get a common denominator and work with fractions all the way down, and I resent them for that. Because they made me work with fractions all the way down. When I could have eliminated the fractions on the first step of an equation. So I did not learn it like this. So luckily, you guys are learning that we, with an equation, we can eliminate fractions on the first step and you don't have to work with fractions.
Now, I'm gonna tell you what I told last period. There's a million different ways to work math, okay? Lots of times. But I'm not only teaching you math, I'm showing you the most efficient ways of doing things because right now and in the future, you're gonna have time tests and you don't have time to work a 20 step problem when you can do it in five steps. So I'm showing you the best ways to work them the most efficient way. Because from here on out, you're gonna have restrictions on time, on tests. So I'm doing more than teaching math. I'm showing you the most efficient ways to do the problems. Could we do another example problem? Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, fractions, some more? Okay, well, in 2 1, you had a bunch of fractions in different forms. So you had to do transformations um, with the two different forms. If you look on page 71, Page 71, problems one and two were form one. Problems three and four were form two and you follow different orders, remember? And all of these problems had fractions and it was requiring that you do point transformations multiplying fractions. And so I was expecting a lot of questions on this, but nobody's asking me anything. Nobody's asking me to stay after school. Nobody's meeting me during my office hours. Nobody's saying anything to me. And I know for a fact, you don't know how to do them. So most of my students do not know how to do those, but you, you've got to learn to ask me. Um, so how about let's do a problem on page 71 or 72, but you, you got to pick it out. So Anybody want to do a problem? Page 71 or 72 with any of those fractions, you had to do transformations of fractions. Could, could we do number three on page 71? There's a fraction. This is the second form. And what is the order? Stretches and compressions, reflections, left, right, up, or down. Do you know that? You have to know the order. This is the second form. So the first thing is you're going to state the order. So the order is the second form. So we're gonna do a horizontal compression by five sevenths. That's inside, right? It's not outside the square, it's inside the absolute value. Right six, up four. So let's just stop there. Do you understand that or no? Yeah. Okay. This is absolute value. The parent points are left one, up one, zero, zero, right one, up one. So when you horizontally compress, that means the X. So this would be negative five sevenths. Five sevenths times zero is zero. And this would be a positive five sevenths. Now we go right six. Well, doesn't that mean you have to add fractions? So wouldn't right mean six minus five sevenths? And wouldn't that mean you have to get a common denominator? So wouldn't this be 42 sevenths minus five sevenths? So wouldn't that be 38 sevenths? 
Now, later when we graph, we have to change that to a mixed number, but right now it's 38 sevenths. Write six, write six. Now we're adding five sevenths. So that would be 47 sevenths, one. Then we're going up four. So up four would be a five, up four would be a four, up four would be a five. So that's what you have to graph. Now, if you were graphing this with me in class, you would have to be pretty exact. But on this online test, you just have to come close. So let's, there's a bunch of things to talk about here. And there's a bunch of things I know you don't know, but you're not, you're not asking me about it. So first of all, what is 38 sevenths as a mixed number? Well, we just went over this. Seven times what is 38 is a five with three remaining. What about 47 sevenths? 47 sevenths is a six with a five. So when you go to graph these, doesn't this mean it's between five and six? And doesn't that mean three out of seven parts? So it would mean this. That's five and three sevenths. This one is between six and seven. And once again, it's seven equal parts. And it's five out of seven equal parts. So let's graph it. So we go right five and up three. I'm sorry, we go up right five and, oh, it's, it's the X value. So we go right five and three sevenths. So you would have to make this three, seven parts, but it's so small, you're just gonna come close because your, your test is multiple choice. So you have five and three sevenths and up five. You have right six, up four, between five and six, right? And you have, you go right six and five out of seven parts, and you go up five. So they wanted you to graph this, right? And what else did they want? They said, sketch the graph. And you can verify in the calculator if you want. That's not important, don't worry about it. But yeah, there's a lot of math here and there's a lot of assumptions that you understand third grade math and seventh grade math, which I don't believe you do. Um, for whatever reason, you know, being honor students, they pushed you and there's a lot of gaps and holes and it's little things like this that you don't know about. So go ahead and ask me questions. Um, do you know how I'm adding fractions? Do you know how I'm changing things to mixed numbers? And like I said, this is a multiple choice test. So on your scratch paper, you just have to come close. So I know about 95% of you did not do this. And um, I don't have a problem with that, but, but the, the point is you don't understand it. And this math is only gonna get more complicated. So if you don't understand how to do some basic stuff, you need to ask me uh, because this is, gonna, this is gonna come up all the time. So if you don't understand stuff, ask me. 
Can you show how you added six to five sevens? Yeah. I'm going to erase this. Okay, so over here, you had, um, maybe I shouldn't have erased it. You had five sevenths and you wanted to add six. Well, you could have just left it as six and five sevenths. But if there were gonna be other transformations, you couldn't have done that. You, you, that's why you saw me get a common denominator and write an improper fraction because we only work with improper fractions. But in this case, adding six to five sevenths, there, were not, there was nothing going to be done with it, so we could have left it as six and five sevenths. But I'm just saying that in algebra two, if we would have had to do something else with it, we don't want to work with a mixed number. So if you, if you didn't want to work with a mixed number, you'd want to get a common denominator. And that would be 47 sevenths. And then you would work with that. But in this particular problem, you didn't have to do that. You saw me do it for future problems. All you had to write is six and five sevenths. Does that make sense or no? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. But just remember, Whenever you add or subtract fractions, you have to get a common denominator. See, watch this, this, there would have been a problem if it was this. What if it was this? What if it was five sevenths minus six? Different issue, right? So with that, you would have wanted to get a common denominator which would be five sevenths minus 42 sevenths, which would have been a negative 38 sevenths. And then changing this to a mixed number would have been negative seven times what is 38. That would have been what, five with three remaining. And that would have been difficult to see just looking at that. So this would have been a totally different problem if this had been left. So see, I got the common denominator, then I got the improper fraction, then I wrote it as a mixed number. So it could have been a very different situation if this had been a left six. The main thing here is when you're combining a proper fraction with a with an integer, you have to get a common denominator. Whenever you're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to get a common denominator. When you're multiplying fractions, you can cross cancel. That's the only time you can cross cancel is when you're multiplying. Um, maybe we better do another problem. Um, but this, but re remember what I said is, is that. You're going to understand me, the algebra two, what you're going to have trouble with is the basic math from elementary school and middle school because they rushed you along or they didn't focus on things like this, which is what's, what's going to hang you up. So if anything's going to hang you up, it's not going to be the algebra two. You're going to understand me. It's going to be just this basic math stuff. And I already know that. So, so don't try to hide anything from me because I already know you don't know it. I already know there's problems with it, um, but, but I'm going to leave it up to you to ask me. Um, you're going to have to make a stand for what you don't know. Okay, do you want to go on or you want to do another, you want to ask me about something else? You want me to do another problem, especially in 2-1? Uh, can you do number five? Okay, they 
you give the function g, and it looks like absolute value. It's another nasty fraction. What is it? They have it in parentheses, but it's redundant. So you can put it in parentheses or not. It doesn't matter. It's still form one. I don't care if you put parentheses or not. It's still form one. Do you guys see that it's form one? Because this is outside the absolute value. Hello? Uh, yes. Okay. So they want us to, to graph it. So let's state the transformation. So this is form one. So what would the transformation be? Right to. Go ahead, listen. Vertical that's not a, That's an improper fraction. So isn't that a vertical stretch by seven fourths? Yes, no? Yes. Down three. So we have the parents, left one up one, zero, zero, right one up one. And we're gonna go right two. So right two means one, right two means two, right two means three, one, zero, one. This vertical stretch, isn't that the Y value? So you're multiplying the Y value by seven fourths. Multiply the Y value by seven fourths. Multiply the Y value by seven fourths. And unfortunately, they gave a down three. So the X stays the same. And so don't you have to say, seven fourths minus three. So don't you have to get a common denominator? So wouldn't this be seven fourths minus 12 fourths? So wouldn't that be negative five fourths? Change it to a mixed number later to graph. And then down here, down three is cool, negative three. But over here, isn't this seven fourths Minus three again. So wouldn't this be negative five fourths? So now we're ready to graph. And we need to know what negative five fourths is because we're graphing. So wouldn't that be four times what is five? Negative. That would be four, then one more would be negative one and one fourth. Yes? So this would be right one, down one and one out of four parts. Right two, down three. Right three, down one and one fourth. And there's your graph. Okay, now, like I said, because you have multiple choice problems, you don't have to be totally accurate with these fractions, but you got to come close. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. Can you guys give me some feedback? I mean, are you, are we totally lost with this basic math? Are we okay or... You that get what's going cleared on it up or... a lot for me. Okay. It's a it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, it's just a lot of writing. Uh, okay. Now, when this when I write this exam, I'm going to try to. This is not a fraction class right now. I'm just telling you though that you're gonna have a lot of fractions, but I'm gonna to try to avoid these as much as possible on the exam, but if they only give me fractions, I don't have much of a choice of picking problems. So I do want you to be able to work with them. I did assign them, 
I do want you to be able to work with them. Um, so we, we have to get better at this because they're not going to go away. All of pre-cal, everything is radicals and fractions, everything, like every day. So if the fractions are not going to go away, they're, they're going to be in full force. So, All right, go ahead. Any qu other questions you want to ask me about? Questions about this problem or anything else? Can you guys talk to me, please? Give me some feedback. Are you guys okay? Are you not okay? Um, what's happening? Yeah, I'm good. I'm okay, but I don't know about anybody else. Okay. Not gonna answer them. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what I think. Um, nobody is asking me for tutoring. Um, even in workshops, groups, nobody's asking me. Nobody's coming to my office hours. Um, so, um, you can't, after the test, complain about what's going on. I mean, all the questions should be asked now. Uh, you know, I'm not going to do a whole lot after an exam, especially when I stand up here and I ask you if you have any questions and you don't ask me. Um, it's going to come down on, on you. Um, so if you understand, perfect. If you don't, it's your responsibility um, to be asking me questions and making sure that you know what you're doing before the exam. All right, last call before we go into groups. Anybody want to want me to work a problem? Anybody have a question about something in two one or two two? Can we working uh, work the graphic form for two two? Yeah. So let me just talk about the graphical approach. First of all, you have a rectangular viewing window on your calculator. So if we want to graph a circle, that's what a circle is going to look like, which isn't right. So what you could do is you could go into zoom and you could square up the viewing window for it to actually draw the circle the way it's intended to be seen. We're not doing that right now. This blue key window, if you go into window, you're defining the viewing window. So we might have a graph that's off the viewing window. So if you ever graph something and you don't see it, that's because you didn't capture it in the viewing window. So our viewing window is set up by default as X min, is negative 10 down here, over here I mean. X max is set up to 10. X scale is how you're counting by ones. Y min is how low the graph is going. So it's going down to negative 10, it's going up to a positive 10, and you're counting on the y-axis by ones. So this is your standard viewing window. So if you have a graph like this, you might have to change x min to, instead of negative 10, maybe start at zero and go up to 20 or 30, counting by ones. The y min, you might want to start at zero and go up to 20 or 30 to capture this graph. And if you want to go back to the standard viewing window of negative 10, 10, negative 10, 10, you can go to zoom Z standard to get the standard viewing window, this one. Now, if you ever go into Y sub one, 
and you get plot, it says plot something, you're in the, you're in the statistics mode. So whenever you go into Y sub one, it should say Y sub one. If it says plot, you're in statistics mode. If you ever get an error, it's not because of the batteries, it's because you input something wrong. So that means you left off a parenthesis or you put a minus instead of a, a negative. And so an error means that you input something syntactically incorrect. So with this graphical approach, you're not graphing the actual function. You're graphing two functions. You're graphing an absolute value function and a line. So you could have two solutions where the actual graph crosses the x-axis would be two places. You could have the graph sitting on the line, which means one solution or you could have the graph missing the line, which means no solutions. And in your book, they use the word prime. Now you're gonna have to do the online problems to know what they want online for the exam. Do they want the empty set for no solutions or do they want the word prime? And if you don't do the evaluate, you're not going to know what to input on the calculator. I mean, on the uh, for the exam, you have to do the evaluate problems to get wise about how to input things for the exam. So, which problem do you want to do for the graphical approach? Now, a minute ago, I think I did number three but I didn't do it with the graphing calculator. So those first problems were supposed to be done with the graphing calculator, right? But I showed you, I was in the mode of showing you how to do a transformation by graphing, but those first problems, if they ask you to do a graphical approach, you have to use the calculator. So let's do problem number three again, doing what they want, the graphical approach. So a minute ago, you saw me do it by hand using transformations, right? Yes. Okay, hold on. There's two different things going on here. In 2-1, no, in 2-1, you had to graph by hand. The graphical approach was in 2 2, right? When you're solving. Yeah, on page 81. Yeah. So let's go over to 81. And which one do you want me to do? One, two, three, or four? Four. So this right here is 2 thirds times the quantity x minus 2. Plus three, am I looking at the wrong problem? Yeah. Okay, number four. Three halves times X minus two. Plus three equals two. So this is the actual graph. And the actual graph is gonna cross the x-axis in two, one, or no places. We're not doing the actual graph. We're putting, we're making two equations out of the actual graph. So the first one is the absolute value of three halves times x minus two plus three, and the other one is y equals two. So you're drawing an absolute value function and a line through the y-axis at two. And you're trying to see which one of these situations you have. 
So when you go into the graphing calculator under the equation editor y equals, you're going to go to math, num, absolute value, and you're going to put in 3 divided by 2, parenthesis, x minus 2, and then you have a parenthesis for the parenthesis, and you have another parenthesis for the absolute value. So you should have parenthesis, 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 parenthesis. If you don't put two left and two right, you're gonna get an error. So then you put plus three. Then you go into y sub two and put y equals two. And then you graph. So you actually see this. And what does that mean? That means there's no solutions, or you could write the word prime. Now, like I said, you're gonna have to do the evaluate problems online to see what the computer wants you to write. So did anybody do the evaluate problems online? Does anybody know what the computer is requesting, either the empty set or prime? No, so got to do the evaluate problems because you got to know what the computer is requesting. So I didn't really have to use the trace feature on this. I didn't use the intersect feature. I didn't do anything because the lines, are, the, the graphs aren't intersecting. Do you follow me or no? Hello. Yeah, I follow. Uh, yeah. I. Okay. Do you want to do another problem where you have to do, use the intersect feature? Or are you guys good? If uh, there was solu if there one or two solutions. Go ahead. I can't hear you. What'd you say? Could we do one with the inners? Are you saying one or two solutions? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So solving this using a graphical approach under y sub one, you're going to put an upside down absolute value because the negative is a reflection. So this one looks something like that, right? Because isn't this left five? You know about this. So even though this isn't the original problem, this is left five vertical stretch by two reflect over the x and up four, and your y sub two is aligned through the y axis at zero. Oh, it should be two. Do I have it written right? So put this in the equation editor. Okay, does anybody need more time or do you have this in under y sub one and y sub two? You guys okay? Yeah. Okay, you go to yeah. second trace. Yeah. You go to second trace and pick intersect. And you move the spider on, you want these two points, you move the spider on one side of the point. 
and you hit enter. Then you hit enter again and the spider jumps. And then you have the calculator guess. It's something two, what is it? What is the X coordinate? Uh, I got negative six. Okay, negative six. So that means negative six is one of your solutions in your actual problem. So then we do the same thing again. You go to second trace and you pick intersect and you move the spider to one side of the graph. It doesn't matter what, line, what graph it's on. Then you hit enter and he jumps to the other graph and you hit enter and you have it guess. So what is the solution for, what is, the, what is this point? It's something two, what's the X? X is going to be negative four. Yep, and that negative four is your other solution. So this actual graph is crossing the X axis at left six zero and left four zero. These mean nothing to the actual problem. We're just using it to get the X coordinates of the actual problem. So if you do not understand this, what you could do is watch my video on Roxanne Birch's YouTube channel and just watch it over and over again. I did a bunch of examples, um, but you're, you're gonna have to watch the video at this point and you're gonna have to um, just follow my video and follow the directions I'm giving and just practice. I, I, I'm kind of upset that I have to spend this much time on this because this isn't, this isn't math. This is just supposed to be an easy way for you to figure out the solutions, but it's turning into a, a really big problem. So this is just a graphical approach to supposedly find the solutions easy using a graphing, uh, graphing calculator. Um, also, if you're, if you don't understand my videos or what I'm saying, you can have someone teach you, um, in your group you can have somebody show you. Otherwise just watch the video, follow the directions and go from there. All right. Are there any other questions about anything? All right. Well, like I said, I'm planning on an exam on Friday morning at eight. So unless there's like a lot of questions and a lot of problems, we're probably gonna have that exam um, because we are finished with 2122 and you should, you should be on top of things. If you're not, uh, maybe you, know, you need to step it up a little bit. Um, you're gonna go into the math wizard teams right now. And I I'm just letting you know that I was upset with one of the groups last period because they're just working individually. They're not listening, they're not following directions. And they ended up doing one problem I had other groups doing like 10 problems. So I need you to try to do what I'm asking you to do. Um, I want you to decide what problems you're gonna work, um, that you're gonna practice. We're just practicing problems. Get a, we're not trying to finish our assignment. We're not trying to do any of that. We're trying to practice for the exam and clear up problems. And so, you're going to take turns picking a problem. You're going to talk through it and do it correctly the first time. People who are fast are slowing down a little bit. People are slower speeding up, but we're not letting any one person drag the team down. So you're working the problems. If somebody's completely lost, they need to just write things down and they'll have to figure it out or go, you know, or see me or go to tutoring or something. But 
um, I want I want the groups flowing, um, and I do want a big discussion going on about the problems. So I've given you a whole bunch of problems. You got book work, um, you got online problems, you got worksheets. I mean, there's all kinds of problems. Pick problems, work them, and see if you can um, get through them with no difficulty. Okay, class is over today at twelve ten. Um, we spent way too much time with me. Um, I, um, we're going to go into those math teams and classes over at 1210. I'll be checking in and taking attendance. Okay, so this class meeting is over. I'll see you in your teams.